Hi, my name is Farah Sheikh, and welcome to all the BCVS 2022 uh, attendees. We uh, just finished our bench to bedside session uh, on cardiovascular therapeutics, not lost in translation. I'm here with my co moderator. Hello, I'm Irene Turnbull. I work at the Cardiovascular Research Institute at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. This session was quite exciting. Uh, it was all about bench to bedside. The first talk was by James Martin, uh, who talked about gene therapy approaches to signal cardiomyocyte renewal in the injured heart. He really identified some key molecules such as SAV, which was uh, a stop signal that prevents proliferation and how you manipulate that. You can now start proliferation again. Um, I thought it was innovative uh, in terms of when he did single cell sequencing, identified some new cell types, cardiomyocyte cell types in the heart that could be more prone to proliferation. Um, and I really am uh, hoping to see some really exciting new data come out of his lab on, on this particular cell type. Uh, the second talk was by uh, Victoria Parikh. Uh, who talked about variant effect mapping for inherited cardiomyopathy. She really applied some very cool new technology using CRISPR-based approaches in order to understand all these new variants that no one really has any idea whether they're functionally significant or have an impact on patient care. And uh, she identified a new method in order to test whether these variants that are found in patient populations can really drive cardiomyopathy. And um, I was really, really excited about her technology, her approaches, and how to really get at that question. If you bring your family member in and they have a potential for heart disease, how do you sort out whether they're going to undergo patient care and how is their patient care really going to move forward? The third talk was by Dr. Katie Reiner from the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, and she spoke to us on inflammation and atherosclerosis and the role of cell death. She presented very interesting information on the pathways leading to necroptosis and plaque rupture. And being the fact that MALKL is the terminal step of necroptosis, uh, she did a study, in vivo study, expecting that the downregulation of MALKL would reduce the necrotic core. However, as a surprise, they found that the plaque did not get smaller. This led her to investigate which other factors would be involved in this finding. And if what, what they identified is that the absence of MALKL leads to the cells to accumulate more lipid. And furthermore, she did studies investigating the function of MALKL in the spleen and bringing down the story to the, the point that the, the, as the microenvironment in the bone marrow can be uh, modified or affected in cardiovascular disease, microenvironment in the spleen might also be in, involved in, in the cardiovascular disease. And the last talk was by Dr. Laura Tesoro from the University Francisco de Vitoria from Spain. And she presented her findings using a newly synthesized nanoparticle to reduce inflammation. And this nanoparticle is Nile 10. This is a nanoparticle that's small in size, has no cross reaction, has high biocompatibility, low toxicity, and low immunogenicity. They tested this nanoparticle in porcine and neurine models of cardiac ischemia reperfusion. And on day seven, after the treatment with the nanoparticle, they found in, this, in the animals treated that they had less inflammation, less fibrosis, and improvement in myocardial function. We'd just like to wrap up and um, let you all know that these um, talks that were just presented really focus on patient diagnosis, how to better diagnose patients, what therapeutics might be available and what are the cool new therapeutic targets that might be uh, important to moving forward to uh, clinical settings in order to test their approaches for patient management and, and treatment.